Netarama TV presents Getting the Shot with Corey Rich. Hi, I'm Corey Rich, and you are watching Adorama TV. Adorama.com is the home for anything photo or video related. Today I'm going to talk about trying to create the sense of motion in a still photograph. Years ago I had the opportunity to go to Mallorca, Spain and photograph one of the legends of rock climbing, Chris Sharma. Chris was really one of the innovators in a subculture of rock climbing, which is deep water soloing or psycho block as it's called. Now that means climbing without a rope over the ocean and if you fall, you fall into the ocean. The reality is I was in Mallorca to actually try to document Chris really innovating the sport of psycho block or deep water soloing. I was working with three of my very close friends, Josh Lowell, Brett Lowell, and Peter Mortimer, three documentary filmmakers that were working on a film which was called King Lines, and it was documenting Chris Sharma traveling around the world, really pursuing the most aesthetic, beautiful, most challenging rock climbs on the planet. I was watching the three of them shoot motion, and I became sort of jealous. I realized that in three seconds, they could really show the progression of what Chris was doing or the struggle, and you could really see that in the motion footage. But in still photographs, you got just that moment. It was one moment. During the block of time that I was in Mallorca, I started to really think about how could I, in a still photograph, try to create that same feeling of, of progress, of progression, of motion. So I racked my brain each night and I came to the conclusion that maybe the way to do it was to shoot a single photograph, a background plate, but then shoot a series of images that would be the sequence of climbing images in the photograph. But I needed the right situation and finally, near the end of the trip, I found that situation. It was a detached arch, an island separated from the coastline, and it was a 60-foot arch with what turned out to be the hardest deep water solo in the world. It took Chris several years actually to finally complete this climb. So on this particular day, Chris had to actually, every day, he would swim out to the island, he would climb up the backside of the island, dry off, put on shoes, put on a chalk bag, and he had several chalk bags. They were all drying out in the sun in the, on the backside of the island. And then he'd traverse under the arch and he would start climbing up the arch. So what I did was I walked out shoulder to shoulder with Brett Lowell and we set up tripods in the ocean. I was kind of neck deep in the ocean. And with a, it was a Manfrotto tripod, carbon fiber legs with a ball head so that I could quickly adjust to the camera. And I, I went with a very wide lens, something like a 17 to 35 millimeter lens, so that I could really get that, the depth in the foreground and have lots of depth of field. Because I was working literally in the water, I mean almost neck deep and sea spray was, waves were breaking, hitting the tripod, I was getting sea spray on the lenses. I had Schneider Optics clear filters over the lenses because I didn't want the sea spray actually getting on the glass. Um, I also had lens tissue, which I was using the actual lens tissue where you can individually pull the lens tissue out. That's the best I find for actually cleaning the lens because it really absorbs some of the moisture. I also had a bottle of just uh, lens cleaning fluid. So if it was really, if I got nailed by some water, I could spray the lens, wipe the lens, spray the lens, wipe the lens. Sometimes it's just that repetitive pattern of kind of over and over going in a circular motion to get salt water off of the lens. The other extreme, if today I were doing this, I would maybe consider if it were rougher waters, I would probably put the camera in an Aquatech housing just to make sure that if that rogue wave hits, there's a guarantee that I'm not going to have a damaged camera or a ruined camera for that matter. But I, and then what I did is I shot the master plate. I waited for that perfect moment where the light was right, the island looked good, and there was a moment, in fact, when a, a sailboat cruised past in the background. And so that was my master plate. I shot a few frames, I bracketed, made certain that the water looked good. And then when Chris finally traversed under the arch, I began shooting. Now I'm a sports photographer. Now I started thinking about individual moments. I was looking at body position. I was looking, about, looking at the shape and how he was separated from the wall. And of course, I was exposing for the background. I wanted Chris to be silhouetted under the arch, and I wanted the highlights to be exposed correctly. So I'm exposing for the highlights. 
And as Chris is attempting to climb his new route, I'm actually taking pictures along the way. I probably shot 100 photographs of this attempt of Chris trying to climb uh, this particular route, which eventually became Espontas. This was a long time ago when I shot this photograph. I was shooting digitally, but I was probably shooting on a 512 card, not 500 gigabytes, but 512 megabytes. And the files were probably fairly small. But then I had the ability to download those photos onto a laptop. I know this is commonplace today. But then I had the ability to launch Adobe Photoshop, select my background plate, and then start selecting, editing, the best pictures of Chris, the best body positions, cutting Chris out, and bringing them into the single composition, into the single photograph. And eventually I stitched together an image, which is 10 photographs of Chris from the start of the climb to attempting to do the dyno, falling into the water and the splash of the water. I think what I really walked away with from this experience was the idea that the technology is the great enabler. Digital cameras, computing power that was incredibly fast, an Apple laptop, Adobe Photoshop, sophisticated software that really gives us the freedom to be creative, to realize our creative dreams. So I hope what you take away from this is, um, one, you have to embrace technology. That's, we live in this amazing time. The sky's the limit. It's the only limits are what you can dream up. Two, feel lucky that this isn't something you have to do in the dark room because quite frankly, I don't think you could make this picture if you were do shooting on film and printing in the dark room. It would be really, really, really difficult. And three, force yourself to get out there and make some interesting pictures and uh, try to think about those pictures in a new way. Be sure to check out Adorama's latest contest. There's a ton of opportunity to win some pretty darn cool stuff. Thanks for listening. I'm Corey Rich. You're listening to Adorama TV. There's an enormous amount of content just like this that gets published on the Adorama Learning Center. If, you're, if you haven't subscribed to the Adorama YouTube channel, do so, and I will see you soon. looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.